All right, guys, we're back with a very, very exciting beer today. Uh, this is courtesy of Daniel Harper, the Endosymbiosis uh, fellow beer tuber. You all know him. If you don't, you should be subscribed to him. This is the uh, final beer from him that I uh, received in a quite excellent and fruitful uh, beer mail. Um, of course, this is Samuel Smith's Yorkshire Stingo, um, 9% ABV. Previous editions, I believe, were 8%. Um, this is a... I think most people have heard of this beer. Most, pe most people know the reputation of this beer. Uh, 100 points in Draft Magazine. Uh, just an insane score. I think uh, Duval is pretty much the only other beer that actually scored that in Draft Magazine. Uh, beer Advocate uh, says it's an English strong ale. Right Beer says it's an English strong ale. Beer Advocate says A minus overall, and the Bros give it a B plus. Uh, right Beer says uh, 97 overall and 98 for style. Uh, this beer is uh, bottle conditioned for like one year in the traditional oak casks that uh, the, the uh, brewery uses. See, we'll have uh, just look here in the back of the bottle explains it better. Uh, some of the oak casks of Samuel Smith date back more than a century with the individual oak stays being replaced by the old brewery coopers over the years. Gradually the casks soak in more and more of the character of the ale fermented in stone Yorkshire squares. Short Yorkshire squares, sorry. Yorkshire Stingo is aged for at least a year. Matured in these well-used oak casks in the brewery underground in the brewery's underground cellars, driving fruit, raisin, treacle coffee, Christmas pudding, yada yada yada. This was brewed in 2008, so it's set in a year for a year. Uh, released in 2009, I should assume. Oh no, this is 8% alcohol too. Okay, so this is an older version. Uh, stand corrected there. So uh, big thanks to Daniel. Uh, not only is this an aged beer, so it should be in much better shape than a fresh bottle. Um, this is also a very expensive beer and a very rare beer. I believe it's only released every August for a time. Uh, I think in some, somewhat uh, in uh, connection with Yorkshire Day, I guess is what it is. Uh, so like Samuel Smith, uh, is Yorkshire's oldest brewery. They were established 1758. Um, they still use a lot of traditional brewing methods and this is a very traditional style. Yorkshire Stingo. Stingo refers to strong ale, English strong ale. It's an old term. Um, basically a barley wine, English strong ale, anything around that. It's sort of a catch-all old ale kind of thing. Um, they use the same water they've used ever since they started, like they have a well 85 feet under the ground. And uh, it's also the name of, uh, the Yorkshire Stingo is also the name of a famous public house in London, or uh, a pub. And uh, the ingredients, they list water, malted barley, cane sugar, hops and yeast. Alright, so that's all we really need to know about this, I guess, and we need to uh, get into this beer. I've been waiting to do this one for a while now. I've been putting it off uh, for when I had a perfect morning, and this looks like a perfect morning, so we're going to do it. Be right back, guys. Okay, guys, we're back. Sam Smith, Yorkshire Stingo. So take a look at the beer. First of all, the um, thing you notice, it's not, uh, it's not a clear, pretty beer. It's not as dark as I expected either. It's kind of, I expected maybe a bit red, more of a red hue to it, maybe more brown. This is a very um, murky, murky orange. As, a, as, a, as I think I mentioned, um, bottle condition. Now, although I said it is um, aged in oak barrels, uh, ale barrels at that. Um, I'm not expecting much of, a, of an oak flavor, like uh, these are beer barrels that have been used over and over again for some, as I said, over a hundred years, and um, really it deadens the wood flavor, and they put them in there more to actually get the flavor of all the other ales that have been in those barrels. So there should be a, a sort of a wood character here, I think, but uh, not as pronounced as you might expect. 
Looks very pretty though. The heads um, sort of sort of like uh, the Bureau did previously. The uh, Samuel Adams um, Oktoberfest. It's got that um, semi-tan sort of moving over to almost an orange cream kind of ta uh, color to it. I actually think it is a pretty beer. I mean, I, I think most people look at it and go, that's kind of a murky, dank beer, but that, that to me, that's, that's pretty because it's much more in line with um, a traditional uh, British style kind of ale, which is something I like. I like the aesthetic value of a look like that. So, go right to the nose. Mm. Oh wow. Big um, first thing that comes to mind there's a lot about this that's comparable to like a Belgian quad. Now it doesn't have the yeast character of a Belgian quad. It doesn't have that Belgian yeast. Um, but it's got the same very uh, strong uh, sweet notes that a Belgian quad would have. Very dark fruit, uh, port-like sweetness to it. It's also got caramel toffee. Maybe a bit of uh, cooking sherry in there. Oh, very nice. Um, I dare say even like, uh, it's got this sort of tobacco hint to it, but we're not talking cheap fucking cigarette tobacco, we're talking um, quality hand-rolled cigars dipped in sherry kind of thing, right? Oh, it smells very, I gotta get into this, we'll do the taste right now. Oh, man. very smooth very creamy carbonation is very soft but it's there mmm I detect a tad bit of the alcohol in the finish um, but it is so well masked uh, this is a big multi beer it's definitely got that barley wine kind of stamp to it. The smell basically just carries right over to the flavor. What you smell is what you get in the taste. Uh, very complex, a lot of notes going on. Raisins, uh, dates, pears, uh, plums. More of that um, tobacco-y kind of finish. Uh, sherry sweetness. Oh wow. That's amazing. Incredibly drinkable. <whistles> Got this dry, um, dark fruit, dried fruit finish. I got the tobacco kind of taste coming up. Bitterness is starting to build up a bit. But what bitterness there is, it's balanced with the malt sweetness really, really well. Wow, that's amazing beer. That was worth the wait. A uh, big thanks to Daniel for this one. Um, I know this is an expensive beer, and this one's been sitting around a while. So it's had a chance to uh, mix its flavors up a bit. I dare say probably some of the um, creaminess and smoothness I'm getting from this has to do with how long it's been sitting around. That's an amazing beer. Uh, I really like it. Uh, this is right up my alley. Uh, more of a traditional British style kind of thing. Um, this and like imperial stouts, <laughs> um, you know, old, old ales, um, barley wines, things like that, big scotch ales, uh, wee heavies, you know, uh, that's the kind of thing I really dig. This is a perfect, perfect fall winter beer.
incredibly sessionable for uh, <laughs> for eight percent. Wow, I could drink I could drink one of these down like super quick, and I'd be in trouble really fast because I'd be on my second or my third. A bit of um, oak woodiness coming out in the finish. Like I said, uh, I expected it wasn't going to be big, and I was right. It's not. It's just this there to hold things up a bit, give a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a bookend. Ah, wow, that's amazing beer. That's amazing craftsmanship. I gotta say five out of five. Uh, there's no way I can uh, give it anything lower than that. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the beer at all. It's perfection. Even this fly wanted a bit of it. That's beauty. That is beauty in a glass right there, boys and girls. Um, do yourself a favor and seek this one out. Uh, I know it's one of those um, overhyped beer legends in recent years that uh, some people scoff at and go, ah, can't be that good. I mean, some snobby magazine like Draft Magazine gave it a hundred and all those snobs and beer advocate and uh, rate beer gave it this and that. Well, you know what? This is one of those beers that really does live up to the hype. Um, if it didn't, I'd be the first one to tell you guys. But, you know, there's nothing wrong with this beer at all. Um, it's perfection as far as I'm concerned. Alright, guys. Uh, my camera's dying here. So, Sam Smith, Ted Caster, Berkshire Stingo, uh, 5 out of 5. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. A uh, nice little look into the past. Uh, of what British ales used to be and you know some could argue what they're coming back to be there's been a resurgence in the uh, British uh, beer community as of late uh, people started to look around I guess and say Jesus our pubs are dying uh, our traditional styles of beer are dying uh, we're being overrun by these disgusting loggers it's about time we take back uh, real ales Cheers, guys. See you later.